Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and now this is part two of this playlist. If you haven't seen the first one, go to the description where you can easily find the playlist or go on the channel, uh, click on playlist and then you can find this home audio project with these open buffalo speakers I've been playing with. Um, in this part I'm going to play just a bit of music for you, a bit of a demo, uh, describe a few things. Next part is going to be uh, about uh, measurements, proper measurements in different locations in, in the room as you can see those blue dots I showed in the previous video as well. Um, yeah, so let's kick it off. So actually in the previous part I, I didn't even show the controller for the DSP, which is over there. That uh, car audio DSP from Zepco, the HDSP5, which is a very, very advanced uh, DSP. So with that, I can play from the inbuilt HD player. Um, I played this in the previous one as a teaser. So you can go to the folder section. This is the album. Go back, then you see your folders like that. All sorts of stuff. And uh, that easy to use, really. Then we go back to the HD Bluetooth, which is actually proper um, HD, aptX HD. So there's no problem sending through 24-bit uh, songs through that. If you want to know more about that, then check out Qualcomm, um, which is a very new technology. Most people think that Bluetooth is not really capable of uh, sending uh, proper files through and it's lossy. This one is not 100%. Um, that was a bit of a change in the system since the last video, because as you can see, I have different tweeters now. Um, this time I'm playing with the Mundorf uh, AMTs, the 25s which is a very different type of animal. Uh, before I had two monopole tweeters and you could see I had one facing back, whereas this one is quite different. So you can see the diaphragm. It's slightly see-through as well because it's open at the back. Like that. So it radiates sound directions if you haven't seen the previous video I could just quickly mention the rest of the uh, speakers so that's a hybrid audio x6p and that's an acoustic elegance IB158U yes it's not the depot range uh, and it's here because I had this on my shelves from my previous car projects but this one has very good specs as well for this application so there's no problem with that as you see the buffer is open no enclosure whatsoever and it's running fully active through the DSP with these old school very old school Technics amplifiers no high end or whatsoever so I can show it quickly we have highs and then we have mids and then the bass drivers. I'm not going to say too much about them because the next video is going to be about the measurements. Um, then you will see how they were tuned, EQ'd, how the crossovers were determined. Um, yeah, let's be a bit of music, shouldn't we?
Everyone knows this song, um, but I'm gonna put the song titles in the description as well. You can find it there. Um, for open buffalo speakers, it's um, quite easy to say that the staging is is just on a whole different level compared to boxes. Um, this room is not great yet, so the room is at the very beginning yet when it comes to room treatment. Um, so there's a lot more to come and I will show every single step with measurement measurements and everything that I can't really see from people from other places They just put up absorbers uh, the fresh room panels and whatnot um, But they never really show the difference what it makes to the room But uh, the speakers already play beautifully after I found the right location for them. They are around five foot into the room in a uh, what is it, six meter, that's um, around 18, 18 feet long room. And my listening position is around three uh, feet away from the back wall. If I go any further to the back wall, uh, closer to the back wall, then it becomes quite bassy, blurry, boomy, and the mid range uh, lacks information. Uh, it's just not pleasant to, to be there as as you know, in any other room, never be against the wall, the back wall. Um, if I go any further, closer to the speakers, um, then maybe with boxes you could get away. Um, but with these, I then start to lose the bass response. So you really have to find the, the right spot where the bass is just right. When you find that, the bass is, is just on a whole different level. Um, it's accurate, it's so natural, effortless. And it, hang on, just listen to this. I remember when I left, found a father in a pack. Well, you know, I have been living for just the clothes I had on my back. Now I'm so sorry for what I've done, and I'm out here on my own. It took me away from here. The train can bring me home. It was a train that took me away from here. But a train can bring me home. The mastering on, the, on this one is quite bass heavy. So it's a nice fat. Um, double bass playing in it but it's beautifully contoured um, yes he had a decent amount of tuning uh, with the DSP I have 30 band of EQs on every single channel available I didn't use as many EQ bands but there's a fair amount used to make the response as uh, linear as possible uh, yeah the next video will be interesting for sure but there's definitely no lack of bass. Yes, you can organize a big party and have, you know, window moving bass everywhere, um, the walls shaking and whatnot, but um, that's not what I'm after. And actually, you can see something down there on the floor. Um, that's going to be part of the next project added to this system. So I will have uh, sub sobs as well i don't go into that just yet let's just find something else good old classic
Funny thing is that I'm I'm sort of fed up with this tune, or oh, I was, because I heard it so many times in so many cars, and I was just like, oh, again and again. And then actually, uh, this was the first time, not when now I'm sitting, but when I was listening to it yesterday, that actually I got shivers. It's just so dynamic. Uh, the strings on the guitar just come through so realistically now. It's it's absolutely crazy with these tweeters. They. Yeah, they are not the laid back um, options, that's for sure. They they show every single little detail. They are very sensitive. They were a good 5, 6 dB more sensitive than my previous solution uh, with those uh, audible physics tweeters. Um, yeah, they are really good. You can use them from 1.5K upwards if you want it to. Uh, actually, I run them pretty low as well because the the attack on them in, in upper mid range and lower high frequency range is, is better than with uh, the mid range drivers. So yeah, you can do crazy things when you know what you're doing with them. Okay, let's find something a bit more basic. over the bass range with with this solution um, some of my friends since uh, you know since they they've seen what I've started with this project they they've also made uh, some sort of attempt to play with open buffer and I'm sure you know there's a lot to learn from it however I wouldn't suggest going ahead and just using any driver any bass driver with this application if you want great results, you definitely need drivers, large drivers, even multiple of them if you want. Um, and you really have to pay attention to the specification. Ideally, you want uh, low uh, inductance, you want low moving mass, like for a 15, you know, nothing above 100 gram, 150 maximum, uh, but rather on the 100. Then you need QTS above 1.6, 1.7. Some of the best depot open buffer drivers have even like 0.9 QTS. And you need high VES, like, you know, three, 400 liters of VES, or even more, five, 600 liters for a 15. Then, then you will experience something very different. Like these acoustic elegance, I'm not trying to link them up because I have no business connection to John at AE and I'm sure I'm not the first person praising his products but if you really want something great guys then check out Acoustic Elegance in the US they worth every single penny actually he raised his prices after many people were telling him that his speakers were too cheap for what they do so the prices have gone up considerably quite a lot but still I still say it's worth it they are beautiful. They don't look anything crazy, but it's not the point. You have to hear it. All right, so that was that. Let's go back. What else do we have here from my playlist? So I'm gonna drop these tunes into the description for you. Um, I really like this artist, Sean. This song has proper bass under 30 hertz, and it's still pressurizing the room easily. 
If you won't believe my mortal soul, if you want to leave this lonely home, well, I won't play your game no When the colors fade out. sure what's gonna come through from this one because uh, my shitty phone compresses down when the bass gets a bit loud and it doesn't really want to record anything under 40 Hertz unfortunately but uh, one thing is sure these drivers are so silent there's no mechanical movement noise or anything on them um, and the lower you play the more efficient they are really and in my room, actually, I can tell that much without showing the uh, next video and the measurements, but actually they they peak in between 33 and 38 in the room with our box. And they still uh, create audible response down to like 20, 23, four ish. Um, but I will have a dedicated sub in the room just to push that extra infra range a bit more. So yeah. Well, rock is definitely a music genre where you need that crazy amount of bass and kick that these won't really produce without an additional subwoofer. Um, so I can't say that they are perfect for every single genre, but they certainly sound great.
listening to rock music with these is a bit like having a pair of headphones on. It's beautifully accurate, but you won't get that feeling that you are in front of a stage. Um, I don't think I've said anything new about, uh, with this when using open baffles, but um, the detail is, is just phenomenal. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what I play, it can be rock, it, it can be hip hop, anything uh, they will play down low. Something very different, proper club music. Because, uh, you know, audio five people listen to everything. It's not necessarily just only jazz and blues. like this can actually make the door of the room shake that's for sure well I'll probably leave it here because because I could play music all day long and some of you would actually enjoy it some people think that you know what's the fucking point uh, you know demoing any speakers through a phone recording uh, not too much to be fair <laughs> but um, I also know that you know this can give a bit of inspiration uh, for some of you if you want to experience something else, this setup or anything I have in this room will always be available for demoing once this craziness is over. Hopefully you all keep safe, guys, at these times. Because, um, um, yeah, this is this is my Mark I design, but uh, I'm sure in a few months time I will have something very different here, because uh, that's just me. I always have to do something crazy. For the time being, I'm definitely happy with the direction I've chosen with these in this room. And um, yeah, guys, subscribe to the channel, please, because then you won't miss the next videos. In the next one, as I mentioned a few times, I'm gonna show the measurements for these speakers in different locations in the room. And I will also show what I've done with the EQ in uh, and timing on these speakers in this room. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can talk to you very soon. Take care.